हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज अगर राज फ्रॉम रेन स्टूडियोज बैक विद येट अनदर वीडियो सो सम ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स गो ऑन कैंपस रिक्रूटमेंट एंड दे कंप्लेन क्वाइट अ लॉट दैट द कैंडिडेट्स हु कम फॉर इंटरव्यू आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन जे आर ई जे वी एम एंड जे डी के सो इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दिस वेरी टॉपिक इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन वॉट द बस इज ऑल अबाउट बिटवीन दीज थ्री थिंग्स एंड वॉट इज द फंडामेंटल डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज थ्री कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ जावा इको सिस्टम आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस वीडियो यू वुड बी pretty confident regarding the difference between these two and you would be able to answer most of the common questions you can get related to jvm jre and jdk make sure you watch this video till the end in case you want to be very clear about these three things in the java ecosystem so without any further ado let's start subscribe to rain studios youtube channel in order to learn more about software development also make sure to click the bell icon in order to be notified whenever a new content is available on the channel so we all know that there are three prominent operating systems out there to name them windows linux and mac os let's suppose you wanted to write a program which runs flawlessly on all three of those systems but these systems are fundamentally very different from each other so you would be required to write three programs which cater to the requirement or the architectural differences of these three platforms so you have to write a separate program for your windows machine you have to write a separate program for your mac os and linux machines so it is going to be like that and this is something we see in the iOS and Android development ecosystem so people are required to write two application and those applications work and look the same but the only thing is that that the implementation and the code is different and it is tailored as per the platforms but what if you want to minimize on your effort in writing three systems there is an approach you can follow you can write an abstraction layer which glosses over the differences between the implementation and the architectures of these three systems so for windows for linux and for mac os you can write separate abstraction layer so you have to write a specification which defines a system which actually provides you with a required abstraction so that as a end user you are just required to write only one type of code and this type of code can be run on the target machine using this abstraction layer so all you have to care about now is to write your program in accordance with this specification so that the abstraction layer which is sitting right on top of your operating system can understand your code and then it can translate your code into the machine code as per the underlying platform and execute it on a real hardware so this abstraction layer is the java virtual machine or the jvm and it actually glosses over the architectural differences between the underlying oss and the hardwares and as we have talked about that now we can write a program which can be run on all three operating systems because now we are only concerned about the implementational details required by this abstraction layer or the jvm so now all we have to care about is the program this abstraction layer can understand and this program is the byte code which we get after running our programs through the java compiler so this byte code can be run on any system where jvm can run because if the abstraction layer is in place it can readily take the byte code and execute it and run it through the actual hardware now here is one thing you should notice is that we are not talking about the java programs we write we are talking about the byte code because it is the byte code that gets executed through the jvm and not the dot java files you actually write so here we are talking about byte code the dot java thing comes at the later point in the development cycle and we will talk about it but here we are specifically talking about the java byte code and this byte code can be readily executed 
on any JVM implementation out there. And this is how Java or JVM ensures write once and run everywhere ideology because all JVM is concerned about is the bytecode. So now programmers only have to care about one architecture that is the JVM architecture. They don't have to concern themselves with several architectures related to Mac OS, Windows or Linux because now they are only targeting one system that is the Java virtual machine and that is how Java actually ensures the right ones and run everywhere ideology. So, so we have already learned that JVM is the abstraction layer which sits on top of the operating system, right? So if you are spawning a JVM server on Windows machine, the GRE is the runtime environment which is going to take care of several processes like whether the memory is available, whether CPU is available, if all the necessary hardware and the software that are required to run your Java program are in place, can you actually run the target program on the system? So G GRE has to ensure all of that thing, then it has to create an environment where JVM has access to all of these underlying hardware devices, right? So it is the responsibility of GRE. So GRE ensures that if your program uses an AWT toolkit or any sort of windowing toolkit, whether the toolkit or the necessary softwares are available on the platform and then it actually loads all of those softwares in the memory and it makes those softwares in the memory available to the JVM so that JVM can actually function. So whenever you start a Java program, this GRE which is residing on your disk spawns processes and these processes then spawns JVM and this JVM actually gets most of its functionality from the classes and the APIs provided by this GRE. So GRE is the program or the Java runtime environment which is sitting idly on your disk. So in a sense you can say that GRE is the passive mode of JVM. As soon as somebody double clicks on a Java program, this GRE wakes up and then it becomes JVM and this JVM then sits on top of your operating system and then it starts executing the byte code which we have asked it to run. So now I think you are clear about the JRE and the JVM part. Let's talk about the JDK thing. By now we are very clear that it is the byte code which the JVM needs. So this byte code is actually platform independent because all it has to conform to is the JVM specification, right? So this Java bytecode has to be generated somehow. But we know that Java bytecode is a low level code and as a human being, as a human programmer, it would be quite hard for us to get that or write that bytecode by hand. We need some sort of mechanism to write something in a human readable form which can be converted into bytecode. Here JVM languages come into play. So this Java is actually a JVM enabled language and there are other languages like Scala and Clojure which are also JVM compatible languages. So what do I mean by JVM compatible languages? So these languages come with a compiler and when you run the codes written in one of those languages, the compiler is responsible for transforming your human readable high level language code into the byte code which the JVM machine can read and process. So the JVM does not actually understand the code you write inside your .java file. It actually understands the code or the machine instructions written in the byte code. Now, to generate the byte code, you would require certain tools which allow you to generate the byte code and debug the byte code in case of any issue. Now, JDK is that package which provides you with these sort of tools. So, JDK is 
a collection of tools which help you in creating the bytecode and then debugging the bytecode right so jdk provides you with the java compiler and this compiler actually does not create a low level machine code it actually creates an intermediate code known as the bytecode right and this bytecode is converted into the actual machine level code via jvm so jdk is the package which contains tools related to the creation of the bytecode so let's talk about some of the common interview questions you can get related to this topic so they can ask you like what is the difference between the three and we have already talked about it now they can ask you what is the difference between gre and jdk so when you want to write java programs you actually need jdk because in that case you would be required to have access to tools which allow you to create bytecode but when you only want to run the bytecode you don't actually need the jdk you only need the jre part hence in order to run a java program you only need jre but in order to write java programs you actually need jdk because jdk provides you with additional tools required for the compilation and the debugging of java programs now the other thing they can ask you is like how is java platform independent the thing is that there is an abstraction layer that is the jvm sitting on top of the operating system and it is actually ensuring that the developers do not have to concern themselves with the underlying differences between the operating system now the other question they can ask you can be why is c++ or c faster than java it is because there is an extra abstraction layer sitting on top of the operating system or the hardware in java our programs do not run directly on the bare metal they run on the java virtual machine so there is an extra overhead of first running the program through the jvm and then the jvm converts those bytecode instructions into low level machine code since there is an extra layer of abstraction has the delay in case of c++ and c there is no such abstraction in place c and c++ programs can run directly on the underlying hardware and that is why those programs are fast but this thing also makes those programs non portable so if you write a c++ or a c program on one architecture you can not be sure that it is going to run on the other system you have to take care of the differences between the underlying cpu and the machine architecture but in case of java we do not really have to care about all of those differences between the actual hardware so that is it guys in case you have any more doubts regarding the differences between these three things make sure to leave a comment on this video also in case you have any more questions regarding the java language make sure to leave a comment on this video i'll try to answer your questions and queries to the best of my knowledge or i will go out and research a bit more about your questions and then try to answer them in case you are new here make sure to subscribe to rain studios youtube channel because on this channel we talk about programming software development and launching applications also if you found this video useful make sure to give this video a thumbs up because that will motivate me to produce more such stuff and in case you did not like the video make sure to press that thumb down button so that i'll get the idea that there are people who did not find my content useful and in case you want to see any particular type of video on this channel make sure to leave a comment on this channel or you can connect with me on instagram and send me a direct message about your queries so this is your guy Rajesh Saxena signing off take care bye bye